Okay, two un uniform line charges are located at some point, and we want to find um, we want to find the charge. Find charge. of lines inside the sphere. I kind of clipped the uh, question there a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is change the orientation, orientation of the sphere. I butchered that. To the origin. So the, the lines relative to the sphere will be uh, changed as well. Second, fine length of lines inside the sphere. And third, use the uh, so we have rho s times the length equals q, which is what we want. Okay, so first things first. The problem is asking for the sphere at this point right here. Um, it's three, one, and zero, but you can see that these lines move in the x direction. They are infinite in the x direction. So this three is irrelevant. We can make it a zero, which is what we want. The one in the y is not irrelevant. We will have to change this to a zero in order to make this zero. We're both, we're shifting the whole problem down by one. Now our sphere is centered at the origin. Okay, so we have a sphere at the origin the radius of 2. This is going to be the z. This is the uh, x. And we have a y component, but we're going to pretend that y is into the page or out of the page. We're still going to consider y in this graph, but we're not going to label it. Okay, so now we need to make our uh, lines. We have a line at one at uh, minus 1z and one at plus 1z. And it goes infinitely through x. So it's going to look something like this. Okay. And these are both plus one and minus one. So we may be tempted to say that this value is one right here. But we can't say that because y is going in this direction, right? We have some component of y in this direction. And the line may not be exactly on the. Uh, on the z-axis. It may be it may have some component of y going along this direction, the back and the into the page out of the page direction, right? So the first thing we can do is figure out what this value is right here. The value from here to here. Well we do that by making another plot of z and y. Well we know that this value of y is zero and then the other one is 1. So we do see that in this case it's entirely on the z-axis. There's no y component. But that's, that's not necessarily given, so we had to make that map. So now we know that this is a 1. Okay, well we know that this is a 1. And we know that this is the radius of the sphere, which is 2. We can now use triangle trig, right triangle trig, to find this length right here. So 1 squared plus L squared equals 4. And I'm just doing 2 squared, which is 4. OK. L squared is equal to 3. And L must be equal to the root of 3. So now we have the length of this one portion here. Right? But to find the length of all of the lines inside the sphere, we need this one, this one, this one and this one and they're all equivalent in length because this distance is the same as this distance here is the same as this distance here 
So, our Q will then be equal to 4, because I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, times the square root of 3, times our row S value. So Q is equal to 4 times the root of 3, and our row S value is, um, this is in meters, put the units in, and our row S value is 20 nanocoulombs per meter. Cancel the meters. Q is now equal to 143 nanocoulombs. That's part, that's part A. <clears throat> okay, part B similarly. Let's find our, uh, we got to do this part again. We've got to change the orientation of the sphere. So again, 3 goes to 0. It's irrelevant because x, the lines of x are infinite. This value could be 0, it could be 100, it could be a million. The value of our problem will stay the same because the lines are going infinitely in the x direction. Okay. So this 2, again, is now we're at one space away. So we can leave this at um, we could actually make this negative one. That's what we'll do. We'll make it negative one. Okay? So now this can go to zero because we've changed this to negative one. We've just shifted the problem down by down y by two. And this is zero already, so our z can stay where it is. <clears throat> okay. Now again, I will plot line from the z x-axis, draw a big circle, this is a radius of 2, and now we draw our lines, and again they're at the 1 and negative 1 of z, and they grow infinitely through x. Let me get this guy out of here. They're growing infinitely through x, so this is our L1, L2. I didn't call them out before, but you know, whatever. So, first, so, the, uh, the question becomes, what is this length here? This is the origin. What is this length here? Well, again, we'd tempted, we'd be tempted to say that it's one, but until we add the y component that's going in this direction, going in and out of the page, or you could say, we can't be sure. So let's do that now. So we have a y of negative 1 and a z of 1, you could say. And of course, by symmetry, it'll all work out. So a y, this is y of negative 1 and a z of 1. So our point is right here. Okay, so now we need to figure out how far it is from the origin of these two uh, axes. So this is a 1, and we said that this is 1. So this value here is also 1, right? And we could take 1 plus 1, square both of them, is equal to 2 squared. So C is equal to 2, square root of 2, sorry. So now this value here is equivalent to this value here, because now we've added in the Y component. It's coming out of the page by 1, or into the page by 1, whatever you want to, however you want to orient your Y axis. So now we know that this value, um, where's my eraser? Mm. Oh, screw that.
Hold on, I'm forgetting how to use this damn thing. It's a pen, right? Yeah. All right, well, whatever. I don't feel like using finding my eraser. Um, this value is square root of 2. Okay? So now, I guess I'll keep it red. No, I can't go to blue. Now this value here, we already know that it's the radius, which has been given as 2. So now, we can find the length in question, which is here. It's the length of our line. Um, square root of 2 squared plus, we'll call this b, b squared, this is b, um, equals uh, 2 squared. So 4 plus b squared equals 4, oh wait, no, 2 plus b squared equals 4, b squared equals 2, b equals root 2. So this is also root 2. So then, just like the last problem, you have this section, this section, this section, this section. They're all equivalent. So you can say q is equal to the four sections multiplied by square root of 2. And this is going to be meters times 20 nanocoulombs per meter. Um, this gives you 113 coulombs, oh, just coulombs. And there's your problem. Thank you. Uh, if it helps, give me a sub. Peace.